Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Editor Program using Scala. In this video, we're going to continue looking at our chat program. Uh, we wrote basically the first half of it in the last video. Now we're going to actually make the part where it chats as opposed to just accepting new users. So you'll recall we made it so that it accepts new users in a separate thread, which we created through the actor library. Uh, and we did this because accept is a blocking call and we might need to have multiple of these going on at the same time. In addition, we asked the users for their names and this was also put in a, uh, in a separate thread for the simple reason that we don't want to block the next user logging in while the first one is typing in their name. We also had to make it so that our buffer was synchronized and so we used a uh, used uh, an approach called a mix-in here and so we mixed in synchronized buffer with the normal array buffer and that allows us to um, probably, that allows us to have an array buffer with that functionality but where the calls are synchronized because we're adding things into this buffer here but we're going to be looping through this buffer over and over down here. So what should happen down here? So this is outside of the thread that's accepting new users. What I want to do here is I want to run through the users, check if any of them have typed anything. If they have, I should read that in and print it out to all the users. Uh, and then repeat that over and over and over again. I'm actually going to write another infinite loop here. Because uh, as I said before, if this is going to be terminated, it can just as easily be terminated by a sys.exit as, um, uh, as by having the, the loop end. Um, okay, so we're inside of here and I want to run through all of the users. So I'll write a for loop for user in users. What do I want to do? Well, I need to check to see if that user has typed anything in because I don't want to block and wait for them to type something uh, and then not get to, to other users. So I'm going to do a check if user dot and we have our input stream which technically isn't an input stream anymore. It's now a, uh, a, a reader. Uh, now, for the regular input stream, we used available. Available is not actually a function call on, on the readers. Instead, there is a function called ready. And it doesn't tell much how much we're going to read, but we don't need that because we're going to utilize their read line. Um, val input equals user.is.readline so we get their input and now I want to write that out to all the other users okay. so um, what can we do here how about we go another for loop for user2 in users user to dot os dot print line and I want to print out the name of the first user it's not an s right there user dot name plus plus input okay. note that right now I'm not doing anything special to Oh, it's called PS, not OS. I'm not doing anything uh, special to check if they typed in any weird commands. We don't have any private chat. We're not doing any of that. We're just, you type something in, it goes back out to all the other users. Okay, and we can now delete this code. And now it's time to check to see if this works. So it builds. We run it. At least I hit the keystroke to run it. Uh, there we go. Okay. Run the Scala application. This pops up and it says it's running. So I am going to bring up a terminal here and 
let's do a telnet, says what is your name. Now, while that is going, actually no, this first time I'll just mark. Probably should have said, okay, welcome Mark or something like that, but we didn't. Uh, well, it's definitely echoing it back to us, which as the code is written right now, because we didn't prevent user2 from being the same as user, that is the correct behavior. But we really want to see if we can do another user in here. So let's pull up another window. And I will also do telnet to localhost 4444. It will go by Lewis. So this one says, Lewis, is anyone here? And over here, Lewis, is anyone here? Okay. Hey, look at that. So we have written a simple uh, chat program. Um, and, and at least at this level, it works. We haven't pushed this very hard. So for example, okay, you can close your telnet by hitting control and bracket and enter. And now I can quit that out, which begs the question, what's going to happen over here? Okay. Um, so the, let's actually, let's reconnect. Uh, we bob this time. Okay, uh, we're not running into any problems right now when we send stuff to the uh, to the broken or to the connection that's that's no longer active. I have to admit that does at least slightly um, surprise me. Um, one of the things about TCP, so the I mentioned in the first video on networking that the socket that we're using, the server socket, and then this socket type use the transfer control protocol or the transmission control protocol. And the transmission control protocol, part of the reason why it's used so much is because it guarantees that the messages are sent or you are notified if they aren't. And so just like file IO, there are a lot of things that can go wrong here. And right now I don't have any tries and catches in this, uh, but if you want to make your program robust for networking, you need to have that inside of here. So for example, when when I want, this is almost, uh, well, each one of these while loops needs this because without it, any one error, so for example, you, you know, someone loses their network connection, you can't send the message across, you don't want to crash the entire server because of that. Instead, you want to just go past and ignore that user. Uh, so that is it for this video. In the next video, what I'm going to do is we are going to look at how we could, instead of using Telnet, we're going to write a very simple chat program uh, or just a terminal that we could use in place of the Telnet there. So we'll come back and do that just in case, you know, one advantage of this is it turns out that I believe the newer versions of Windows don't ship with Telnet anymore. So if you happen to be doing your Eclipse development on a Windows environment, you might not have easy access to a Telnet program. You can download things. Uh, but we'll show you how you can write your own program uh, that will, well, I guess we could write it with a GUI. We could write it so it just works down here in the console as well so that it does a, a simple implementation of the same type of thing Telnet does. Anyway, we'll be back.